we're back to another episode of Beyond the Sun. And Jesse's back with us. You've been missing. We thought you'd gone into space. I materialize once in a while. <laughs> Every once yeah. in a while yeah. he materializes on the show. And Harrison is here, as usual, to take a look at events outside our atmosphere, essentially. Let's start with the International Space Station. Bit of an emergency. Uh, yeah, the, the International Space Station is a very complex machine. It's a huge space uh, laboratory. It's the size of a football field. It has a lot of computers, a lot of systems to keep those astronauts alive and just recently um, uh, an alarm went off that was saying that the conditions in the environment on the United States side was uh, just a uh, something was going wrong and so okay. this alarm went off and uh, the astronauts responded properly they donned space uh, uh, not space mass they donned some uh, gas mass and they moved and sealed themselves into the Russian side while the ground started working on what the problems were and and it turned out um, happily that there was no emergency, it was just a faulty switch, or faulty um, alarm. Alarms, yeah. light, happens in your car sometimes. Yeah, you know, these, these things happen. And yeah, there, there was a problem in one of the computer relays, and so it triggered an alarm that there was an ammonia leak, uh, or ammonia in the atmosphere, of course, that's very toxic. It's used in the cooling system, very efficient coolant in space, but very toxic to breathe, and so the alarm was that there was ammonia in the atmosphere. Now, um, you, you mentioned the ground could work on it. Can most of the things that have to be fixed be done by people who aren't even there? Well, it's more that uh, it takes more than, there's six people on the International Space Station, for instance, and it takes more than that to, to be experts on everything uh, that's floating up there. So when something like this happens, while the, the people in space are trained on various things there, far more likely the experts are on the ground because they're the ones who built it, they're the ones who know the specs, they know what's going on. And so when an, an emergency happens, the people in space are working on it, but the, the ground crews are also um, fighting with them and working on the same situation. The, the big difference is that the people in space are the people who react in the immediate, in the moment, this is what we have to do. So the alarm's going off, I know, check one, put on my gas mask, step two, go to this hatch, step three, close this hatch, this sort of thing. Whereas then the ground people have more time to go through the details and say, okay, this is what happened, and they sort of follow uh, uh, where the problem may have started. Uh, the life of an astronaut involves a lot of checklists, it seems to me. It is. It, it's the ultimate fighter pilot job. Okay. So um, you and I, over the last number of weeks, Harrison, have talked about SpaceX for a variety of reasons, and they're back in the news. That's it. SpaceX is in the news today as one of our top uh, stories to watch in 2015, and, and they showed why today. I think we have a little video clip. Maybe we can, uh, can we go to something of uh, what SpaceX released today. look good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a spectacular video. That's uh, what SpaceX did last weekend was they successfully launched a resupply cargo ship up to the International Space Station. It's the Dragon capsule. It got up there with about 5,000 pounds of cargo supplies, science experiments, and so forth, including a Canadian experiment, actually. And this was their but, fifth one. They've yeah, done this. This yes, is their bread and butter yeah, now. So they SpaceX is doing well. But what you're seeing there on the screen of that, it looks like a missile coming down, is SpaceX was trying to land the first stage of the rocket on a barge in the ocean. So it launched Launched up to about uh, something like 100 kilometers, released uh, the upper stage of the rocket, then the first stage tried to fly itself back down and softly land on a barge. And it got to the barge, as you <laughs> saw there on the video, yes. but it didn't quite accomplish the soft landing. And they released that video just this morning of, of that landing attempt, and they figured out actually what went wrong in the landing. It wasn't anything to do with the rocket, actually, but it, it ran out of hydraulic fluid. And the hydraulic fluid is, we have a little mock-up Is this here. a rocket? Th this, is, this is a rocket. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the SpaceX rocket here, there's these flaps on the top of it, and yeah. they're aerodynamic fins. And the rocket uses them to control its descent and landing. And it ran out of the hydraulic fluid that's used to maneuver these fins and allow it to fly properly. And so when it ran out of that fluid, these fins all locked. And the rocket on its own, just the engine, couldn't maintain the stability of it, so it sort of came in sideways. Yeah, as something would do. If I drop this pen, there's no guarantee the point will hit. That's unless right. Unless there's a stabilizing system that... Uh, yeah, unless there's some sort of stabilizing equipment. And, and the yeah. motors themselves on the bottom can do some steering but not enough on their own. That's why they've installed these fins on the top of it. But they have successfully landed in this fashion, Jesse. Uh, soft landings have been, have been done before, and, and it's something we've, I mean, you know, soft landing is needed to land on Mars, it's needed to land on the moon, and the, the shuttle program did soft landings, sort of, where they came in with their, 
their air, aeroplane type thing. Um, it's it's certainly been done, and SpaceX has been working on it, and they've had successful parts. But this is a this is a little bigger scale and a little more um, a little more firepower. I yeah. think the difference yeah. to this one for SpaceX is they've done the test flights where they would send a rocket up a, a kilometer and then have it come straight back down. They've yeah, never, we, we we've yeah. talked about that yeah, yes. on it. But yeah. but they've never done one on an actual mission where it actually flies up to space and then comes all the way back down. The barge that it tried to land on is 300 feet long, 300 kilometers out in the ocean after you've flown up to space, and and it all happens in a period of about 10 minutes. It's yeah. quite remarkable that they got to the barge. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, said, I, I think quite accurately before they tried, they said it's 50-50 that this could work at all. So everybody at SpaceX, I think, is pretty thrilled that it, it got to the barge and, and solving the problem of having some more hydraulic fluid is, is a reasonably straightforward problem for SpaceX now to try to solve. All right. By no means a disaster. No, no. Nobody it, was hurt. And they learned no, a lot. And, yeah, right. it, it, yeah. Unmanned yeah. rocket, unmanned barge, nobody hurt. SpaceX considers this a, a big step forward Good. in the development Definitely. of the reusable rocket. What's Beagle 2 doing Beagle in the two. news? Named well, after is this the, Snoopy, uh, Snoopy's brother? <laughs> <laughs> it's, named, it's actually a, a spacecraft named after the, the ship that Charles Darwin was on. Okay. Uh, but it's a European program uh, that was to Mars. It launched in 2003 along uh, attached to Mars Express. It's a, a current orbiter of Mars. And it, when it launched in 2003, it also had a lander that was supposed to land on Mars called Beagle 2. And so 2003, it arrives at Mars. Express goes into orbit. Everything's fine. And then they release Beagle 2 and they lost contact. And they tried their best, and they couldn't find it. They assumed it uh, impacted the ground at a really high speed and was destroyed. The cool news is, now it's 24, tw sorry, 2015, and they found it on the ground using uh, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, I believe. Mm -hmm. they, they took pictures of where they thought it was gonna be and where it should have landed, impacted, and they found a partially deployed uh, Beagle 2, and there's this is pictures of it right here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's like a little... It's right in the center of the screen. Yeah. It's that white dot that's sort of yeah, yeah. flickering as the frames roll through. And so what this was, it was a uh, a capsule that was going it to... It's It was like an air cushion bounce thing. So it's going to land, bounce, and then deploy itself. It had four solar panels needed to deploy, and it appears in the picture that only two, maybe three of the solar panels deployed. And the hiccup is that the radio antenna is on the fourth one. Oh, of so, course. So it has to completely deploy or it can't maintain contact. And it didn't. And so then it didn't. All right. Uh, so you assume that it wrecked. You found it. It's wrecked. Uh, is, that's a big deal? It, it's a good thing be, uh, because they assumed that the entry, descent, and landing program didn't work. And that means that they assumed the parachute didn't open. They assumed that it hit at a ballistic speed. They assumed it was completely destroyed. That's wrong. They know that it landed softly. It landed okay. It just, yeah. for whatever reason, uh, which they're still working on, the panels didn't open properly. Okay. Yeah, so this, this is considered this a successful one's, this landing. This one's sort of shaped like a, a donut that sort of unfolds itself into different layers. And, mm -hmm. and so it's landed properly, but it didn't unfold properly. So it, it was a soft, safe landing on Mars, but didn't deploy. The Comet Lovejoy. Comet Lovejoy. It's, it's a spectacular comet that if anybody at home has any binoculars or a low-power telescope, any telescope of any sort, decent binoculars, if you go outside in your sky, is it next to the Pleiades? Uh, that's, that's it, yeah. So on, on the right of the image is the comet. That's yeah. the, the green part with the tail. A good thing to spot near it is on, the, on that first picture, uh, on the left, the top left of that first image, there is a little star cluster. There it is. The top left there is something called the Pleiades. And if you look at that with your naked eye, it looks like a little tiny mini dipper. It's in the southwest sky. And so then if you just look to the west of that little tiny mini dipper with your binoculars, you can see Comet Lovejoy, and that's what you're seeing there. On All the across right Canada, the you could see that tonight? Anywhere. Certainly. Unless yeah. there was too much cloud coming. Yeah, yeah. you got to have a clear sky. It's and much, much easier in a dark sky outside of the city, and we're only talking like 20 minutes outside of the city. Okay. And if you need some help, York University has an observatory you can visit. All, all right. Uh, what's the website for that? YorkObservatory.com. Okay, we're going to have less than a minute on this, but 10-year of Huygens, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, this is a spectacular one. This was the Huygens probe. It was part of the Cassini mission. Cassini is still out there orbiting Saturn now, but the Huygens part of it is something that landed on Titan. That's the biggest moon of Saturn, one of the largest moons in the solar system, and it happened 10 years ago this week. It was the first time that anything landed on uh, the moon of a large planet out there. You can see there's some images from the descent and landing. Uh, very hazy, very thick atmosphere. Uh, direct images of the surface of Titan, first time that's happened. Yeah, this is one of only seven objects we've ever landed on. It's the only moon in the solar system that has an atmosphere. It's the only 
other object in the solar system that has liquids on the surface. And 10 years ago uh, this year, it la they landed this probe there to take a look. Important note, though, it's liquid hydrocarbons, not liquid water. It rains, mm -hmm. but it rains things like methane on Titan. It's a, it's a really remarkable world. And probably hugely unpleasant. Yeah, minus 200 yeah. and, and <laughs> methane nice place. flowing around everywhere. Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Talk to you next week. Thanks, Jerry. Yes, sir. Stay Fly with us. More to come. The moon. Let me play among the stars and let me stay.